Hi guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another Royal News video. So we're going to start this one off with Catherine, the Princess of Wales, because we've had a sighting of her actual video footage. You think that this would be enough to stop the conspiracy theories. Oh no, they are hanging on to it tooth and nail because these people do not want to be proved wrong. So each and every time that one of their theories crumbles apart, they're back with a new crazier version of it. First of all, people said she's had the operation, but how is it no one has caught a photograph of her? Not even Paps. Well, there you go. Paparazzi managed to catch a photograph of Catherine being driven into Windsor by her mother on a school run. No, that wasn't good enough. It wasn't Catherine. We needed an official portrait. They got an official portrait and the media and the public destroyed Catherine to the point she was apparently left upset over it. She was dragged over hot coals for editing her family photograph taken by her husband of her children and sharing it to the public for something nice to say thank you for Mother's Day. It was treated like it was the first ever photoshopped photograph that has ever been released into the world. It was crazy, it was absurd, and the stories are still going on about it. So then they said, well, it's not good enough. It's not proof of life. She must be locked up somewhere. Something awful's happened to her. Even celebrities joining in on this. So then we get a story that comes out that Catherine and William have been spotted in Windsor going to a farm shop. When the story got released, lots of us were happy going, oh, that's lovely. And it was quite nice that members of the public didn't film them. This then went viral. It's a fake story. Loads of people jumped on it. Then the photograph got released by a couple of the newspapers. Oh, that's not Catherine. It can't be Catherine. It doesn't look like Catherine. That's not Prince William. It's body doubles. People even edited the photograph that was released to make it look even more conspicuous. They did that to then post it on social media so people that were seeing the photograph for the first time saw this version of it and it helped push the conspiracy theories. The original does look like Catherine. Then, luckily, video footage then gets released. Obviously, people were bartering as to how much they could sell it to TMZ and The Sun for. These are screen grabs from it. You can quite clearly see that that is Prince William and that is Catherine. It looks exactly like her. She walks like her. She smiles like her. The bone structure, everything, that is the Princess of Wales. I do not understand the people that cannot see that that is Catherine and William. It is bizarre to me at this point. So, conspiracy theories are still coming out. Apparently, that's Christmas decorations in the background. That's fairy lights and a Christmas wreath. No, it's not a Christmas wreath. Those are one of those wooden hearts that you can get. People often hang them in their bathrooms. I had a couple of them at my wedding. They're normally at arts and craft fairs. Fairy lights, fairy lights are not just for Christmas. People are so caught up in this conspiracy theory that they are just not willing to let it go. Every single time that something comes out that dispels the last rumour, they come back with 10 more. How can Catherine still be missing? Where's Kate is the hashtag. We know exactly where's Kate or where's Catherine or where's the Princess of Wales because we were told. We were told on the 17th of January, the day before, the Princess of Wales had had an operation that was abdominal. We were then told that she was going to stay in hospital for 10 to 14 days on medical advice and then she would go home. We were then told that Catherine was no longer at the hospital. She was on her way home and that is where she was going to recover and put her feet up and she would be back at the end or rather after Easter. I don't know what calendar these people are working on, but I can tell you my calendar. My calendar tells me that the 31st of March, Sunday, is Easter Sunday. And I know that today is not Easter Sunday and last week wasn't Easter Sunday because today is the 19th of March. I know that because it's my birthday. What are these people on? They told us that she would be having this time off. So she's not missing. There is no great conspiracy theory. She's had an operation. She's recovering from it. Oh, well, she's up and about now. She was walking too quickly. Well, that's because you're used to seeing Catherine walking around in 
five inch stilettos when she's on official engagements. She's wearing trainers there. I've seen Catherine walk on plenty of video footage. That is Catherine, that is William. I'm sorry, the amount of body doubles that are out there in the world trying to earn money pretending they look like Catherine and William. <laughs> no one can fake that jawline. If they did, they would be an incredibly rich person. That is Diana's bone structure in male form. Those two look happy, Catherine looks healthy, and I'm just really relieved to see her out and about enjoying life a little bit. I really truly hope from the bottom of my heart that Catherine has been able to laugh a lot of these conspiracy theories off. Some of them have been deeply unpleasant and borderline, I think the police should be called for some of these people. In fact, some people worryingly have apparently been reporting where's Kate or Catherine's missing to the police. This is how ridiculous and absurd this is. And not only have we had celebrities joining in on this where's Kate hashtag, including Kim Kardashian, we have also had bot farms at work. Now, for those of you guys that don't know how a bot farm works, here you go. This is what they do. It will be the same tweet. It could be the same news article. It could be the same photograph. And you will see it over and over and over and over posted back to back to back. Companies use bot farms to be able to get a certain product or a certain client trending but there are also nefarious ways to use bot farms and i really think that catherine and william are being targeted not only have we had the mass attacks and again like these bot farms being used to do with her health we had it over the mother's day photograph and recently due to a u.s talk show host who i'm going to talk about in my next video he even managed to get the whole william and rose affair trending again but i'm going to save that rant <laughs> for the next video but mark my words, Catherine and William are being targeted and the fact that we saw the other day Russian bots had been trying to get it trending that the King Charles had actually passed away. These attacks are happening and they are using the fact that members of the family are recovering from surgery or having treatment to do it. It is incredibly nefarious what's happening and I think that some people may need to do a deeper investigation as to where it's all coming from. Even Instagram has jumped in on the act of stirring up more controversy. Why? Because the Mother's Day photograph of Catherine with her three children, they put this warning over the top of it. These type of warnings that you see on images, videos, on Instagram are normally reserved to say that this may contain violence or there might be something that some viewers find distressing in this video. It's about giving the viewer a choice if they want to click on it. They've done this over a few edits to a child's skirt and a jumper and a zip. It's absolutely absurd. But how funny that Instagram do this and Megan launches her next Instagram project, the TIG 2.0. And not only that, one of Instagram's biggest influencers, Kim Kardashian, with over 340 million people, this is why she gets paid millions her post. Well, she joined in on the where's Kate or going to find Kate bandwagon at the same time that Prince Harry is hanging around with her mother's boyfriend, Corey Gamble, on a ski trip. There are no coincidences when it comes to these couples. Megan timing her launch of her brand new Instagram project smack bang in the middle of Catherine's Instagram controversy. Sorry, that is completely coordinated and well-timed. Just the same as Megan choosing to launch her latest project smack bang right when Prince William was about to give his speech at the Diana Awards. Now, this was a big event held at the Science Museum in London. It was a big event because the Diana Awards were actually celebrating 25 years. It was set up in 1999 by Gordon Brown. The awards are to celebrate the hard work and the contributions that young people make to society worldwide. From youth ambassadors, young leaders, humanitarians, fundraisers, environmental campaigners, sports leaders, and those that inspire others. The award show meant so much to both brothers. They would often attend together. They would spend time with the winners, with the staff. And this is no different in this case with Prince William, but obviously the joint appearance from the brothers are from times long gone. I can't see that ever happening, to be honest with you. Reports did come out that Prince William wanted to have exited the building before Harry even came in via video link. 
which to be fair, from what I understand, is a good reason Prince William had left because Harry took four hours before he even made his appearance. But Prince William was there, he did spend time with everybody and he gave a wonderful speech, which I have got for you as I show you the winners of this year's awards. But this evening's Legacy Award is particularly special as it marks the 25th anniversary year of the Diner Award, a charity set up to reflect my mother's belief that young people can change the world. I know that she would have been honoured to see a charity in her name doing such inspirational work to uplift young people from all corners of the globe. She taught me that everyone has the potential to give something back, that everyone in need deserves a supporting hand in life. That legacy is something that both Catherine and I sought to focus on through our work, as have the 50,000 young people who have received the Diner Award over the past 25 years. I'm incredibly proud to see this manifested in the amazing young people receiving the Legacy Award tonight. Now, as I was saying, after Prince William had left, Harry turned up four hours later. Not only that, the winners had to return to their hotel to then be shoved into a conference room to have Harry's speech or Zoom call aired to them. So these guys have just won an incredible award and they can't go out and celebrate with their friends and family because they then had to go back to the hotel for Harry's call to come in, which didn't come in until after midnight right? This is Harry really being actively involved in the awards. This is Harry that can jump on a private jet to go to a Katy Perry concert, to fly to a Jamaica film premiere, that can go hand out an award at the NFL, which has got absolutely nothing to do with him, but he can't jump on a private jet to come speak to people that have won the Diana Legacy Award on the 25th anniversary. This tells you where Harry's priorities really are. If he wanted to be involved, why not just pre-record something why couldn't it have been played after prince william left why has he made them stop their celebrations so then they could then go back to the hotel to listen to him now harry's speech as you can imagine was nothing like the wonderful speech given by prince william and i'm not going to play it for you but i will read you just a tiny bit of it he said that his mum would be incredibly proud and thank them for protecting her legacy the impact that you are having on hundreds, thousands and millions of people without you guys doing that and without you inspiring other young people because it feels good. It's the right thing to do. But you also get so much from it that inspiration is like a ripple effect that goes across water. It's Harry's mouth moving, but you can hear Megan's California psycho babble dribbling out of his mouth. Harry, if anything, has become predictable at best. But what I didn't predict, however, was Meghan dropping her huge announcement smack bang in the middle of the Diana Awards. Maybe she was pissed off that Harry had gone on holiday skiing without her. This was a little bit of revenge. A woman scorned and all that. But the timing was incredibly strange because this wasn't just about overshadowing Prince William. This was the Diana Awards. This was her mother-in-law that she has spent many a time trying to emulate and loves the comparisons. I'm surprised Harry would have been happy with her taking the attention away from these awards that he's supposed to love so much. We know that Harry and Meghan now ride on the back of the Royals events for publicity. We know that they do that. We know that we can synchronise our watches so Meghan can try and overshadow anything that the Princess of Wales and Prince William are doing. It's guaranteed. And even I thought this was terrible timing for her because this is her overshadowing her husband as well. It was a bit of an own goal. And not only that, Meghan has quickly scrambled this launch together, as far as I can see. The launch of her Instagram cookery show, which is what this is meant to be, was meant to coincide with the show being aired via Netflix and potentially a cookbook. But Meghan hadn't even got products ready to sell. There are lots of false pictures going around, by the way, that these are the products she was selling, but they're not actually Meghan's. I think this is someone made it up for a joke. That's why you've got a grey polo shirt that Harry always wears. But the point is that Meghan didn't seem ready to launch this. It had a cheesy video which looked like something out of a horror film, to be fair, that was released at the same time. But there was nothing. There's no information on it. There was no products that anyone could buy. Nothing. I think that she just grabbed at whatever she had in her arsenal to throw 
to try and overshadow the Diana Awards, which makes me think that she might be in competition with her husband somewhat. The fact is that Meghan hasn't even got the trademark in place. It's pending. American Riviera Orchard Montecito. Doesn't that just roll off your tongue? No, the only thing that rolls is my eyes at how pretentious it is. Not only that, but the company that's actually doing the paperwork to buy the trademark is called Mama Knows Best. Now, in my head, all I can hear is the Rapunzel film Tangled with Mother Gothel because she sings Mother Knows Best. That is what I heard over and over in my head. But quickly, people on social media pointed out that there is another cookery influencer, lifestyle blogger, very, very famous, that uses the tagline Martha knows best. Yes, Martha Stewart. And we know Megan does like a little bit of plagiarism. This is right out of the very same playbook. Now, as for the name American Riviera Orchard, it has also been compared to a bank based in Santa Barbara. And the fact her lifestyle brands will be her selling fruit butters, legume based spreads and edible oils and fats basically jam and nut butter. But we do already have a royal orchard in place that sells jams and nut butters and things. And that is, of course, Highgrove. Highgrove being the private estate and home to the king and queen. The gardens are open at certain times of the year for people to go around and visit. All of the products are created from produce that is grown in the garden, all organic stuff that is there. All of the profits are donated to charity, something I'm pretty certain that Meghan won't follow in suit with. Now, as for Meghan's big launch, it was launched, what, five days ago now? She's barely made it over 500,000 followers. When you think, put it into comparison, Jennifer Aniston, when she opened an Instagram account, got 1 million followers in less than six hours. Megan is really trailing behind. Not only that, other people have analysed the number of subscribers that she's got and they've looked at the accounts, which most of them are inactive. They've got one post, if any posts at all. So what does that mean? That means bought and paid for subscribers, which isn't illegal. People do do it, but it's quite clearly obvious that I don't think even Megan would have near enough half a million subscribers if they stripped back the bots. And as for the creepy video that was meant to be arty that accompanied her launch, well, it just screams to me, I'm such a down-to-earth mother. Here I am marching around the corridors of my 16-bathroom, multi-million pound mansion in my Carolina Herrera skirt. Come watch me make jam. <laughs> Megan, of course, will be joining the ranks of other celebrity so-called posh mummy influencers. But the thing is, it's little more than the TIG 2.0. Megan might have dusted it with a little bit of glitter. But as they say, you can dip a turd in glitter. It will still be a turd. I'm honestly still a little bit surprised that Megan, the feminist crusader, who only last week was retelling her story of when she was just 11 years old, she was so outraged by a sexist TV commercial, she single-handedly campaigned to have it removed from TV forever. But here she is, fannies about with some pink and white flowers as she goes into the kitchen to bake some goods. I'm sorry, is that not going against Megan's feminist image, a woman in the kitchen, the fact that it's all pink and beige, Megan's favourite colour. It's a little bit laughable, but hey, that was Megan the feminist who was last week on a panel. It's a brand new week and it's a brand new Megan. If Megan thinks that she can take on lifestyle gurus such as Jessica Alba with her honest company that's got a profit in the billions now, Gwyneth Paltrow and Goop, I say good luck to her. I really do wish her the best of luck. The fact is that many people have already said that Megan's little bit of her in the kitchen, she seems to be copying Gwyneth Paltrow already. Let's just hope Megan doesn't get too desperate and she starts to copy Gwyneth's candle ideas. That's something the world doesn't even even need to think about.
Something tells me that Gwyneth, rather than shaking in her Le Bouton shoes at the thought that there is an ex-royal sheriff in town that's coming to steal her A-lister influencer crown, she's probably having brunch with girlfriends and laughing hysterically into her smashed avocado at the thought that Meghan thinks that she's got a hope in hell of making this stick. Given the lack of subscribers that she's got in the best part of the week, it would seem that the duplicitous Duchess is about to fail at yet another venture. Maybe if she hadn't shot it out the gun and been so premature about it, maybe she would have had more of a fighting chance. But Meghan is so desperate to overshadow the royal family and to ride their coattails that she just quite clearly couldn't help herself. No, I'm telling you, this is another thing that I just do not think, no matter how hard she throws it at the wall, it's another thing that's not gonna stick. The only thing that Meghan Markle is good at cooking in the kitchen is trouble. So guys, that's it for me on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm off now to have a glass of wine as it's my birthday with my mummy. So you take care and I will see you soon. Bye.